Now, let's say I want to do everything in ZBrush. I want to UV it. I want to bake it. I want to export it in the painter and all that stuff. So one of the things that you have to realize in ZBrush is in order to use, and we're going to be in the Z plugin over here. So I'm going to drag the Z plugin folder over here. In order to use this multi-map exporter, your low res and your high res have to be associated through subdivision history. So we're going to go ahead and make that happen uh, eventually. But first, we're going to start with UVing. The best way to UV is to go ahead and divide up your object into manageable polygroups. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do UV exporter, and we're going to go over UV master uh, a couple different ways here. But if you've got your low res in here, and the reason why I'm UVing this entire thing together is so he's in, the, he's in one texture map. But I'm going to show you a couple of different scenarios. I'm going to go to subtool here. I'm going to duplicate this off. And on this one, what I'm going to do is just hit Control W, and that's just going to polygroup everything together. And in here, he is symmetrical, so I'm going to keep symmetry on. Uh, polygroups isn't going to help us very much. We don't have any polygroups. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and just do an auto groups really quickly, and that, of course, will be under your polygroups menu here, just in auto groups here. And actually, the first thing I want to do under UV Master is work on a clone. Uh, just a little bit safer, and you can always copy the UVs back to your original model when you're done. So this is our cloned reptile, CL reptile here. And you can go in here, you can choose polygroups, since we've actually made some polygroups here. We can enable control painting, and if we want to, we can tell it where we want to protect. Now, when I choose protect, just like when we were doing Z-Remesher control painting, this changes it to a red color. So if I want to protect, like, the front of his face here, and I can go ahead and hit X to go across X symmetry as well, since he's a symmetrical object. If I want to protect the front of his face here, and then maybe attract under his arms, and just places where it's not really going to be seen. You can also do attract from ambient occlusion as well, and that'll go ahead and, and drop in uh, an attraction along the ambient occlusion line. But I'm going to go ahead and just paint it in really quickly. You can also go in here and paint in density. So if I want a density, uh, less density. So if I'm not going to see something a lot, I can paint in uh, less density, and that actually gives me color. If I turn off polyframe, you can see these colors a little bit better. If I want more density, and let's say like 4x density, like for around his face for really highly detailed areas, you can go ahead and paint that in. Uh, but we don't need any density in here. So we have our object here. We have polygroups of this different areas. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Unwrap, and I'm going to hit Flatten. And this is our object all flattened. It cut the seams for us. If I go ahead and hit Unflatten, and then do Check Seams, that'll show you where the seams are. It's not too bad. If I turn that off, and then go back into Flatten here. Uh, this is just geometry with polygroups. If you want to go in and like move this stuff around, and if you go into your brush settings here and you turn on auto masking and you go into mask by polygroups up to 100 and you turn on hit W for transpose, the first area you try, I'm going to go ahead and hit X to go out of symmetry here. The first polygroup you click on, it'll manipulate that geometry. So, and you can go in here and you can rotate shells, you can move shells. So you can just go ahead and move all this stuff around with a move brush. You can go in here and mask different polygroups is basically just flattened geometry really uh, but it's going to act as UVs when you copy this so if you like this you go ahead and copy it out if I go back down here and unflatten if I want to go ahead and make some of these areas a little more accessible I can hold the control shift and uh, maybe not accessible is not the right word but uh, really fine-tune what I want um, UV together polygroups are going to be your friend and the best way I think to do that is to use uh, the control shift the lasso and now if you control shift click a lasso on an edge ring it's going to want to select that edge ring that's a feature uh, so be wary of that um, but you can usually get it right on a vert there I'm going to go ahead and grab all of the inside of his mouth if I can here there we go well, you got a big mouth. Okay, so now from this point on, I can go ahead and just uh, whittle it down, and I can go across X symmetry, of course, since he is symmetrical, and I can just kind of start removing uh, pieces in here. If you ever get to the point where you have mostly what you want, you just need to expand. It's Control Shift Z and Control Shift X. So Control Shift X expands, Control Shift Z, and basically that's under uh, visibility grow is control shift x and shrink is control shift s sorry not control shift z control shift s and control shift x so now that we have that we can just kind of narrow this down a little bit and you can just go through here and isolate these areas to kind of get a nice polygroup in here now you got, of course you got to be careful another option for you to do let's go ahead and isolate this if you hover over a face and you go into your z modeler brush you can choose polygroup 
And if you want to polygroup a single poly, um, since it's organic, it doesn't really con conform to a whole lot of like flat area rules or anything like that. It's easy to select, but you can go in here and you can just go ahead and choose. And of course, the basic of this, now if you are adding edge loops accidentally or doing any point operations you don't want to do, just hover over that point, click do nothing, hover over an edge, click do nothing, and now your face is now it'll just do face operations, so it'll be a little bit easier. And you can just go in here and just kind of paint polygraphs. Another option to do, hit Control W, is if you hold down Alt, that'll go ahead and just kind of do a paint. And what it's doing is uh, making a polygroup as it goes. Now this is kind of like Q-Mesh functionality, but if you just hold down Alt and go through and paint, and then when you have a bunch of white ones, what that means is that's basically treated as a, as a single poly. So now even though I have polygroup single poly, it'll go ahead and polygroup all of those. So once you've broken this thing up into polygroups that make sense, it'll do a much better job of UVing. And that was the original one I had here. So if I delete this one, and I go to this one, this one has a lot of nice polygroups already broken out for the different pieces I want to UV separately. So now with this one, I can use polygroup, symmetry, uh, we'll go ahead and work on clone. And uh, I don't need to enable the control painting on this one, it should be fine. I've already figured out the seams for it basically, so I'm going to go ahead and hit unwrap, and then flatten. Here's all my pieces flattened. Uh, I can go ahead and unflatten. I can copy those UVs. I can go back to my original, and I can go paste UVs. If you want to check your UVs, you can go down here to your texture map. Whoops. And you can do create, new from UV map, and that'll put a UV map texture on there, and you can do a new from UV check if you want to see if there's any areas of overlapping UVs, which it looks like he does have some nasty areas in here. So if I go to flatten, turn my texture on, you can kind of see Going to W with polygroups up at 100. Hmm. I don't really see anything in there. It might be just uh, sending me on a wild goose chase there. Everything looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore that. And we'll do unflatten. And so there we go. We have UVs on this thing. And now we need to go ahead and bake it within ZBrush now that we have UVs on our object.